Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily update for today, February 17th, 2021. Today we're going to be taking a look at what California and Texas have in common. Now many people think that they're the antithesis. California, the quintessential blue state, Texas, a red state. California with uh, rabid environmentalism at the front end of social experimentation, whereas Texas has a reputation of rock-hard conservative uh, outlook and, and so on. But what we've seen that's worth uh, comparing is what caused the energy crisis in California last summer. You may remember the rolling blackouts and the lives endangered from that in the midst of a heat wave. And in Texas, where we're now seeing a probable third night in a row where millions of people face the prospect of freezing in the dark. What do these two situations have in common? And what you have to start with is the role of radical free market policies in the form of deregulation combined with fake science. And if you understand this, then we can begin to solve it because there's a problem. The, while the liberals are pushing, or the so-called liberals are, are pushing the fake science of carbon and, and the need because of so-called climate change to go to windmills, solar, sustainable energy. Uh, the conservatives argue, well, let the market decide, but the market is not decided based on what's needed for people, but what private interests can implement to make money. So both California and Texas suffer from the same root cause, and, and the simple name for that is the Enron syndrome, the model that was introduced at the end of the 1990s by the hedge fund with pipelines, as some people called it, namely Enron. But if, if you look at the what's going on, you have on the one side the media story, which gets it about one third right. They say, well, these states were unprepared for the crisis. Well, what does that mean? Why were they unprepared? They don't explain, and the reasons they don't explain it is because the media, for the most part, is supporters of neoliberalism and fake science. But let's take a look at the parallels between what's going on with the financial economic crisis, the COVID crisis, and the energy crisis. With the deregulation of banking, you had the move toward uh, larger banks controlling the markets and moving money, especially into speculation and away from investment in goods production. This was combined with the, the free trade policies, which led to outsourcing, deindustrialization. Why? Because you could make more short-term profits by utilizing factories making or engaging in cheap labor practices in China, Guatemala, uh, Thailand, and elsewhere than you could by rebuilding and upgrading American industry. And so you combine the deregulation in banking with the deregulation of trade and what you had was a massive outsourcing and a dependence of the United States on foreign goods production to be replaced by what? A speculative economy in which more and more people lost productive jobs and went into the gig economy, while the only people with money were the ones who engaged in, in wild speculation fed by free funds from the Federal Reserve. Now, similarly with energy, the Enron model was to deregulate to separate production and distribution so that there could be profits made both in the production and the distribution, and profits made based on what? Restricting supply to increasing demand to raise prices. And the California energy crisis in the, at the beginning of the 2000 was based precisely on this deregulation policy, which continued even after Enron went bankrupt uh, the California utility companies either went into bankruptcy or close to it, and the state made a decision not to invest in new advanced technologies, but to take down nuclear, not go into to clean coal, and instead build windmills and solar panels, solar parks. And as a result, last summer, California was unprepared. But it wasn't that the people that were uh, distributing the energy were unprepared, it's the whole system was unprepared. Now, similarly with COVID, President Trump was right initially 
Why was the United States not prepared with the ability to produce masks, uh, the, the ability to have the equipment and the machinery and the, the pharmaceuticals needed to deal with the emerging COVID pandemic? Because of Bush privatization of health care, which then went on steroids with Obamacare. That is, the idea was that health care should be there for private profit as opposed for public good. Same thing that was done with energy. So in, in these cases, same thing with banking. Now, the U.S. Constitution has something called Article I, Section 8 in it, which defines the various areas in which government has the responsibility to regulate, including money and currency, uh, including interstate commerce. Now, the purpose of this is not to put limits on what individual entrepreneurs or scientists or research and development can produce, but to make sure that you don't have monopolies, that you don't have false conditions that benefit small private interests over and above the general welfare. Our Constitution in the preamble specifies general welfare, and a regulatory system that works is one that, re that reflects this principle of the general welfare. What's needed? The way you should approach energy or healthcare is how many megawatts of power do we need if we're going to have an industrial economy? What's the most efficient way to produce it and reliable way to produce it? Just as with healthcare, how many hospital beds per 100,000 people do you need? This is the old Hill-Burton standard. And with credit policy, it's how can local banks generate the credit necessary for small and medium enterprises, for local infrastructure development as part of a national infrastructure policy. But instead, everything's been deregulated. So what is done is what brings the greatest profit. And the greatest short-term profit often comes not from investing in the future, but from looting the past investments. And then you add to that the craziness of the Green New Deal, and you had a crisis in the making. So what, what made these agencies unprepared for dealing with it? The insanity of neoliberal economics, the free market policies. Now, this doesn't mean we're opposed to free enterprise. The actual uh, role of the United States is to ensure that people who have ideas can have access to credit and bring them online. You have a patent system that protects that. You have a, an approach that's constitutional, which allows for the investment uh, by banks, especially commercial banks, in individuals with ideas. But when you deregulated banking, got rid of Glass-Steagall, which was supported by both parties, it wasn't just Bill Clinton. The getting rid of Glass-Steagall was the Graham, Leach, Bliley bill, three Republicans who drafted the bill. And what it basically did is merge investment banks, that is speculative institutions, with commercial banks. So that the money that you had in your checking account and savings accounts got mixed with the money that was being used to buy increasingly exotic financial instruments, which blew out in 2000 with the dot-com bubble, blew out again in 2008 with the mortgage-backed security bubble, and is now blowing out today internationally with the everything bubble. So you have to distinguish between a government which encourages private enterprise as opposed to one which adopts radical free market policies in which the powers of government are given to private corporations. That's what we have today. The problem is not government per se. If government is run by the people, which it's supposed to be, then you have policies that will allow for the advances necessary to sustain an increasing standard of living for a growing population. And that requires that citizens be educated on these questions and, and participate in policymaking. But if you don't have that, if you default that to the people with big money, then what you have is private corporations that form trusts, that form cartels, that take over government policy. That's what big pharma is. That's what the uh, energy powers that, uh, that took over with deregulation. That's what the too big to fail banks are about. And we see the effects of that with a financial collapse that's coming at us very quickly. 
with the inability to deal effectively with the pandemic. And third, now we see it with the electricity crisis in California last year and in Texas this year. So you then add to that the fake science of carbon dioxide causing man-made climate change, and you have a prescription for disaster. And so you have people who are freezing unnecessarily, suffering unnecessarily. But why are they suffering? Because we did not have government intervention to make sure that private interests put the general welfare ahead of personal profit, private profit. And so we end up with primitive, inefficient, unreliable energy production in California, which is what happened last summer when they shut down the nuclear plants, the coal plants, moved to get rid of uh, gas and, and oil production for, the, uh, for electricity, and instead increasingly turned it over to the exotic systems of wind and, and solar. Same thing in Texas. 23% of Texas electricity comes from wind power, and it may be more than that. And so you have a cold snap, and what happens? The turbines freeze, and you can't fall back on coal and other forms of, of electricity because they're shut down. Now, the Midwest was just as cold as Texas. Did they have a problem? No, because they have power coming from coal plants and from nuclear plants still. So we're dealing with a crisis of ideology, of not thinking, of turning everything into money, money, money. How can we make the most profit? That's not how a modern, effective economy runs, and that's not how the Founding Fathers envisaged the American system, because the American system had a sense that the government should free the individual creative powers to produce, but will protect those uh, producers with policies that provide ample credit and protect them from unfair competition by private interests. That's why we had a revolution against the British Empire. And today, the system of radical free market policy, which comes from Adam Smith, the British East India Company, and the City of London, has become the general thinking of most Americans. So we need a change in thinking. And that's why we at the LaRouche Organization and the Executive Intelligence Review just produced a new report on the Great Reset. How they're intending to kill you by getting you to adopt the ideas of free market economics and deregulation and fake science. So write to us or call us or go online to order a copy of your report so instead of being unprepared, as the media says, the American population will be prepared to take on these private speculative interests, these Ponzi scheme operators who ran Enron into the ground, who ran California into the ground, and are running Texas into the ground. We have to reverse that with the American system of Lyndon LaRouche. So thanks for joining me, and I'll be back again tomorrow.